These two handsome little devils were printed on the exact same printer using the exact same resin and the exact same calibration settings. However, one of them cost less resin than the other to print. And using Leachy Slicer grid supports, I can show you how. Now, when you do supports with the grid, that's gonna be found under the, the repair tab, support, and then under structure. And you wanna make sure the object is selected and grid is set to on. And this will set a grid on the bottom. If you hover over the grid interval, you can adjust it and you can kind of see, you know, where the snapping points are. So what these yellow marks is each is a snapping point that a support will snap to. And then from there, it'll kind of find its way to wherever you place the tip. So now the base and the tip have a kind of a, a, a sticky point between where you place it and where it's going to go to the grid. This is going to allow uh, anything that's going to snap the grid, they're going to auto parent because of that. I can show what that looks like in a second. So the next thing I'll probably do is actually just go straight over to Island and I'll just do a quick search on this guy. It's not a very complicated part. I don't need one. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't need to run an Island search, but why not? Uh, it won't take very long and it's helpful. So if I hit zero here on filter area, I'm going to show all the islands this model has, which only has 19. Let's say if I only want to look for islands that are 0.1 millimeters uh, squared, I'm now down to six. There's a lot less islands that are smaller. These are the, the larger islands uh, and these would need larger supports. So I can come in here and place my medium point through. Actually, probably in these ones, I probably want heavy, which is my heavier 0.4. They're not really heavy. They're, they're kind of smaller. I've recently changed that. My medium used to be 0.4 and I realized I never really used heavy, which was 0.6. So I just adjusted it to where my heavy is 0.4. Now what I'll do is just kind of go through and click around this. I like to have uh, a lot of support on these bottom layers. Damage isn't an issue. It's, it's a key. It's going to be hidden. So, you know, have fun with it. Uh, really, you know, place enough in there to really anchor this model down. Now, there's two types of anchoring a model down. There's one making sure it's like stuck. There's the other one making sure it doesn't shift. And so what we want to do is place some on the side where you can't see them. These don't matter, but that's going to kind of anchor this whole thing down to the ground. So, and because they're, see how they're auto parenting, I really don't have that many supports on the ground uh, for how much anchoring I have. I can even put, you know, maybe one there and one there. But over here, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. We want to have enough um, structural supports to kind of keep this huge, this huge part uh, anchored down. Because if we do this, you'll see, for the most part, this is its own object. So from here to here, we want this guy to be very, very stable. And this is where I can, you know, probably put a couple more uh, heavy here. And then I can move on to like, let's say a medium or a medium heavy, which is 0.34. And so the way I like to go is the further I get away from that original point, I can move this guy over by hitting space. The further I get over from the original point, this the smaller the support can get once I've kind of confident that um, I'm no longer, it's it basically the, the print's stable. Um, and I'm only doing it now for like extra security. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this 0.3 kind of in the center as I go up. What I want to do is just make sure this this thing prints. It's got some structural support uh, to keep that from going up. And then I want to stabilize it as well. So I'll go down to a, a light support, something quite small because I don't want damage. And this really isn't to hold the weight of the model. It's more to hold it steady. Because I'm only holding it steady, I don't need a lot, uh, a really big tip size here. It can be relatively small. I'm just trying to keep it from rotating. Here's a cool tip for you. Right now, because I have the island search going, I can't see the overhangs anymore. But if I go under the preferences and I go under to the island detector, I can turn that on. And now the islands will show as well as the pattern for the overhangs. So that can be very, very helpful. Which at this point, I'm, I'm done with this head. Uh, all I need to do is go over to structure and I'm gonna do um, a default bracing and just update the bracing here. And now there we go. This thing's been braced. My default bracing, I've made the bracings a little bit, a little bit smaller. Um, I like them that way. I think it's a little easier to kind of crunch them off when I'm taking off the model. And then the last thing is to go into the raft and I'm going to pick the appropriate raft. This is a rather small, small model. So I'll use the, the default raft and that's it. This guy's ready to print. All right, we're ready to go. I'm going to slice this on the frozen Sonic Mighty Revo using the frozen RPG gray resin. And I'm going to print it at 30 UM. The RPG gray resin has got some flexibility to it. So with this tail being kind of long and giving it some flex, I think is going to make it a really good model and also make sure it doesn't break or snap later on. All right, we'll let that slice. And while that's slicing, I'm going to go get the printer ready. Something very important to note is that I'm going to be using the exact same profile for both prints. And because I'm using the Revo with a built-in heater, the temperature is going to be the exact same as well. If you don't know this, the higher the temperature, the faster the resin cures. 
So if you're printing in the winter versus the summer, you might have to redo your calibration settings or you might accidentally be overexposing or underexposing. But for these two prints, I'm gonna be using the exact same settings, anti-aliasing and everything. So we're gonna have a really good comparison of just how different types of supports can radically change how much resin you end up using. Now that you've seen how you can use grid supports, let's talk about how much less resin it costs to use it than not by weighing the supports off of these two models. First, can you guess which one was which? Was it the white one or the black one that was printed using grid? Well, if I didn't know, there would be no way to tell because they're identical. Let's weigh the supports and see which one wins. To do that, I'm gonna use this handy little scale and some buckets. So let's get going. All right, let's start with the white Xenomorph. And we are at 47.8. All right, let's do the black Xenomorph and we'll see who wins and by how much. 35.4 versus 47.8. That is a difference of 12.4 grams of resin, about 25-ish percent. And there we have it. The traditional black Xenomorph wins over the bone Xenomorph. And just by using grid support, we've saved about 25% on our support. If you enjoy this content, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any more questions or comments, join us on the Lychee Slicer Discord, link in the description. Thank you for watching and have a good day.